I've been working on this system uh, to scan geometry. Uh, it's kind of inspired by The Last of Us. The point of the system is that you'll see my character can kind of run around here. And as she runs around, we're going to kind of profile the space around her. So you'll see little uh, little green uh, box sometimes light up, otherwise it'll be blue. You'll see these uh, beautiful little yellow dots and little sprinkles and things happening. How does this thing work? Number one, we work out uh, in our volume, in the little box that we're around, what are the overlapping meshes? Who's poking their nose into our box? Which sounds weird, but it's not that weird, I swear. And of the ones poking their nose into the box, you say, okay, you go on the list, we write down their names, we start going through their names, and we start working out, okay, you're on the list, I'm just going to start writing your name down, and I want to check your, the bits of your nose that are poking into my box, uh, how, many, how many of those do I care about, how many of those are far enough into the box that I would consider them bad news, and from there we do a calculation, we say, hey, I've processed 1500 verts on noses in my box, and uh, I've noticed that 60% of them were actually within the box, which was kind of annoying. So yeah, I think something might have dropped on the floor near you. The point of this system is to profile the geometry around us. And as we profile the geometry around us, we want to work out how dense the geometry is. Now, I'm saying geometry a lot here, and I mean it for a specific purpose. Now, what I mean is that, like, let's say we walk past these tables I wanted a system that would allow for a little sweetness to be added so that as we walk past the tables, maybe you sort of step on something that has fallen near a table. Uh, the system itself has very basic audio at the moment uh, in terms of actual design stuff, uh, but you can kind of see how it's, it's quite light to actually add additional features to this uh, because all I do is have my base floor wood material and then we have some extra sweetness that play when I walk past specifically very dense subjects and all you'll hear is like a really little wood creak and uh, elements like that. The system itself uh, just uses Anim Notifies, which I've been building on a few different videos, uh, which will allow us to uh, trigger, you know, the, the sound itself. Um, if I check out ABP Manny, I think it is, it might be Manny, it might be Quinn, I don't totally remember exactly, but if I check out this uh, blueprint, you'll see the footsteps that we have already set up here. Um, these will grab the line trace, uh, so they trace down again, which if you haven't checked out this tutorial, uh, that's where we went to do that. And we'll kind of go through that and work out what uh, physics material something is, okay? And then when we work out what physics material it is, we will play a sound at location. And on top of that, we're going to have this mesh density calculator, which is the component that we're uh, building or that I've been building. You haven't been doing it yet. And uh, we're gonna work out if we should play a sweetener or not. And the idea behind this is very game dependent and very experimental. As I said, it's sort of based on the, uh, the Last of Us system where there's like different fragments of glass and they make different crunch sounds. And I thought that'd be really cool to have as a system. So here we'll have, uh, you know, dirt, wood, wood planks, dry grass, the, all the elements that are physics materials in the world. And we'll just use those to uh, run these basic foot location. So when you step down, you're going to play a specific sweetener, uh, which is just going to be a specific meta sound again, uh, which is a tiny, tiny little random container uh, of random assets that sometimes do and don't even play. It's only got a 60% chance to play uh, one of these assets with the right material. So that if you walk past uh, a bench, maybe there's some screws that have fallen on the ground. If you walk past uh, a, a part of grass with, you know, maybe there's something in the grass that you kind of uh, crunch on some beetles or something like that. It's not to replace a footstep system and it's definitely not to get too far into it, but it is the marriage of tech art and sound design and tech sound uh, that I really like as well. So we have this uh, component here. It is an actor component that's going to sit on our player and it just has an average density and a density threshold, which is to say uh, how much mesh should we be checking and, and when should I say that things are fine. So we have this detection volume size, which is that box to say how much detection should occur or how wide that is. We have this measure offset to say how high it is because I want to detect stuff that's primarily on the floor. I sort of opened it up a little bit in the video just to demonstrate uh, what's actually happening because if you do it on the floor and you walk past some things that 
maybe don't even have many verts because like floors generally don't have a lot of verts. Um, and that can be tricky as well. So I have this little density multiplier, so you could maybe scale that for different environments and things like that. Um, the total verts that are processed, you'll just see this thing flying up. Um, I've run Unreal Insights on this and it's actually not horrible. Um, it's probably a little bit too expensive right out the box to be used in a game, but it's, it's better than you'd think. We'll create a volume to start with and we'll set up the extents and set up a trigger volume for all the detection to happen, all within this one volume. Uh, on the destructor, we'll make sure we clear the timer because it's just going to run this uh, mesh uh, average detection timer that you could kind of reset. You could probably change this so that the average mesh detection uh, could happen dynamically and maybe you would change a different amounts, but I didn't, so that's what you can do. The... Prepare for processing. Now, the idea here is that we want to have lots of steps where we could exit. Uh, a system like this wants lots and lots of early outs. And what I mean by early outs is having content or having booleans like this, uh, should we keep going? Um, and again, if I was changing the the method of this so you'd have lots and lots of if, 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 uh, it becomes really, really insane. So think about early outs as you go. Now, we'll need functions like uh, prepare for processing. So this is just to work out how many vertices have we processed this frame. Now we can't process all of a mesh, all of every mesh that's overlapping every frame. That would tank everything and it'd be horrible. And my way is still kind of horrible, but it's scalably horrible. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a big TM, basically. <laughs> scalably horrible uh, is, a, is a great way to live. It's a way of saying, okay, I know that my system is very expensive. However, it's the same cost of expensive every frame as opposed to being a different cost of expensive every frame and getting those big ugly frame spikes. So instead of doing that, what we do is we consume part of a mesh um, and those frames might be a little bit more expensive in terms of allocation, but we're gonna go through and say like, hey, I know you have 5,000 verts. I'm just gonna do 200 of them this frame and then 200 the next frame and 200 the next frame. I'm gonna keep going until I get to the average. Now, again, I took a little bit of a shortcut here in that I don't fully process everything. When I get to the average, I kind of throw the rest out and I say, hey, those that's what I averaged and that's what I messaged, but um, that's okay. And if you stay in one spot, you will scan everything. And if you somehow manage to process everything, you're basically gonna keep scanning them again. Um, this is just to assume that we haven't really done optimization on this to work out, hey, we haven't moved far enough yet or anything like that. So don't stress about that. The actual mesh process is kind of interesting. We're gonna get the transform of uh, a mesh that's passed in or appointed to a mesh because we don't wanna do duplication like that. And each of those, we're gonna get where it is in the world space. Okay, get the LOD or the LOD, um, the level of detail that that mesh is. And we're gonna use the lowest version of it, not the, not the highest version of it. And we're going to generate these vertex buffers. Now this is something that comes deep, deep, deep in Unreal, deep in the depths of, of, of sanity. And um, is the thing that draws the mesh to begin with. Now these uh, total verts to process, this is again going to take a single mesh and so we're not gonna run this all the time. We're gonna work out how many do we need to process uh, before we consider it finished. And we're going to walk through uh, the current index. So we're gonna say, hey, I was at number 245 last frame. So we're gonna start at 246. So we're gonna, technically, I guess we'll start at 245 again, but that's okay. And we're gonna work out, have we processed them all? If we've processed them all, we can obviously throw the mesh out and grab something else and start processing that. Or if we haven't processed them all, we're gonna keep going. Um, unless we've already processed too many this frame. And again, this uh, ties back into that scalably horrible um, or scalably expensive, whatever I said before, that turns into this um, by saying that I know it's expensive, but I'm just gonna do a little bit all the time. Um, and you can kind of keep wheeling this back until it's useful. At some point, you do need to scan enough verts for it to be useful in this particular aspect, but I thought it was a good enough reason to actually watch this video just to work out scalable tooling and working through elements like that. Uh, once we've fully processed a mesh, and again, we'll go through the actual vert processing in a sec. Once we've processed one, we can just say, hey, I've already processed this, so we don't reprocess the same one in the same frame until we throw it out and start again. 
The actual process vertex is it's quite simple actually. It's it's when I say process vertex, all I'm doing is saying like this point, the vert, vert being just a, a point on a mesh, uh, is it within the detection volume below a certain threshold? And if it is, we say that it's in the volume. Um, and if it isn't, we're going to add to the average. So we're going to go through and we're going to say, hey, is it uh, is it above? Is it below the cutoff? Um, is it within the cutoff of the X and Y? And if it's within the cutoff of the X and Y, is it below the cutoff of the Z? Because I don't want stuff in the roof telling me how detailed the floor is. I want the floor telling me how detailed the floor is. And if it is, we draw it overlapping. Now, um, Unreal does kind of struggle to draw this many points if you really crank it up. Um, and if you, depending on the speeds you do things, it might might be a little bit weird, but you can, uh, the, the debug side of this doesn't matter that much really. Finally, uh, we are going to go through and check, hey, have we already processed all the meshes in, uh, in the window? In like, if we are, if there's three meshes overlapping the box and we've processed all three by the time we've uh, checked it, we're gonna throw them all out and grab some new ones. The find the mesh actor is going to go through and work out which uh, meshes are overlapping that volume. Um, and the collision of this is one collision, but it is colliding with a lot of stuff and collision is very expensive. So again, you gotta be kind of careful here. I wouldn't recommend this for maybe like dynamic collision stuff either. Uh, the next step of this would be, yeah, to go through the next, uh, the next mesh. And all we're going to do here is grab, so this is, this is the, the crux of the, the whole thing, really. We're going to grab uh, a mesh. We're going to check for processing, make sure that we haven't already processed it, make sure that we've got space for it, and we're not already doing something else. And if we should do it, we go through, pull the mesh out, pull the actor out, Look at where the actor is in world space. Hey, the actor in world space is overlapping me. Okay, great. Start processing me. Uh, there's a little vector calculation. Don't worry about that. The process interval is the one that gets the average density. Now, the average density being of all of the verts we have processed of this mesh, how many of them are within the volume? Now, that's not really the average density of the points of the volume. Um, it's just a different way of looking at it. Uh, you could have really detailed meshes outside um, that would make it harder to look like it was dense inside the volume. But again, it's it's more of a, a thought experiment at this point to have a play with uh, some of these cool things. Uh, we move the volume around. Obviously the volume's gotta come with the character and we check the overlap with just a really basic box overlap here uh, where we're going to get the half extent, which is kind of the, the midway point out to each of the points of the box and uh, work out whether they should be ignored. Um, I customized this so I only looked at static uh, meshes, but you could put all these stuff on a layer if you wanted to and actually only process that layer instead of processing all layers everywhere, just process the stuff that's on the layer that you're expecting. Um, and that will be quite a bit cheaper as well. Um, the only other part of this is working out when we move the detection volume, what are the new actors that are overlapping? Um, and if they're new versions of it, or if they're the same, we need to update our lists accordingly, work out who's in our mesh and go from there. Uh, then I have some draw volumes. So this is just going to draw a box. The box will either be red or, uh, sorry, green or blue. If it's blue, it's inactive. If it's green, it's active, meaning that it could play a sweetener. Um, and that will just set that one flag. <laughs> kind of crazy that all of this is just one flag, but it's one flag uh, that gets set to let you know that you can play a sweetener. Uh, and then finally, drawing the overlapping vertex, vertex, vertices, vertex. Uh, that is those little yellow blobs, um, squares, cubes, whatever they are, uh, at that point. Uh, and then therefore you take a step and the meta sound says you've got 60% chance of triggering. It's a whirlwind of a system, but it's one I'm actually really proud of and looking into Unreal Insights, which is a build tool that will look at profiling your data. I'm um, actually not that expensive, which is kind of wild. And you could probably keep cranking this up until you got really, really expensive. Like if I look down here and I say the, uh, what, what can we say here? We'll say the measure offset. No, that's probably fine. Density multiplier. That's probably fine. Let's, let's say, well, let's do 2000 verts per frame instead and 
that's probably fine. Yeah, let's just go with that just for the sake of it. Now, again, I don't think I would do this, but like you process more verts and you're going to have more problems, more verts, more problems, essentially. And if I kind of run up to stuff, you should see more, right? So we can see them kind of covering around the box. We can see them kind of pulling up here. I like this door spot. You'll see some of them on the door there. Um, and again, you could offset this, change the offset so it's a little bit lower, change the offset so you trigger on more things and we kind of go through and we can see it'll trigger a little bit more now because we're, we're, we're testing more stuff basically. Um, right, so you can see like perfect example here as I sort of run around this box, uh, yeah, I would say that there's there's likely something to have fallen off, and then we're gonna play some play some variants, play some bits and bobs, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Thanks so much for checking it out. See you next time.